Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. And I'm so happy that you join us to our online program today. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back every Sabbath for new programs where we sing different songs, we have different activities, and we praise God together. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. It's always good to have you guys here worshiping God together. Now, for the past couple of weeks on our online program, we've been doing something different every time. Last week, for example, we invited the kids to send us an email with their name, address, and we were going to send kid out to visit them at a social distance visit, right? We would drive by and kid would wave to them, to those kids. And I, I'm happy to tell you that I drove kid to six houses last week. We visited kids in Glendale, La, Cos La Crescenta, La Cunada, Flint Ridge, Tahanga, and we went all the way to Burbank. And the kids were so happy to see kid, and I was happy to see kids' faces as they saw kid coming by and say hello from a distance. We even had a family that wrote a card of Happy Sabbath to kid. Oh, that was so exciting. Thank you so much for all the parents who took the time to send us that email with a message. If you want kid to come by your house and say hello, have mom and dad or dad send us an email. It is VD, stands for Vallejo Drive, Kids Connection at gmail.com. VD, Kids Connection at gmail.com. Send us an email with your name, your address, and I'll make sure that kid comes by to see you. Uh, unless if you like Frederico and and uh, Francisco that are in Mexico now, that is kind of hard, but we will do our best to have kid come by and see you from a distance and say hello. Now, speaking of kid coming by to say hello, we received a note from someone. Do you guys remember Andrea? She had fun singing and participating in our Kids Connection program. Well, uh, Freddie and her mom, Karen, sent us an email this week. And here's what they said about Andrea. Hi, everyone. We are Freddie and Karen, uh, Andrea's mom. So far, during this time, we are doing good. It is hard for us, but it's much harder for Andrea. I can imagine that. Now, when Andrea saw Kid coming by, by the, the kids' houses last week, she was so happy because she misses Kid. She also misses all the kids at Kids Connection, all her friends. When we ask her if she wants to have Kid come over and say hello to her, she said, yes, please. So I'd like to say, Andrea, get ready. Kid is coming to visit you this afternoon. I'm going to text your dad and I'm going to drive Kid to your house. And whenever we're five minutes away, we're going to let you know Kid is coming so you can come outside and see Kid. And we're going to wave hello from you for you from the street. And uh, mom and dad uh, finished the, uh, the message saying, we will be more than happy to see Kid. Happy Sabbath. Stay home and say, God bless you all. Thank you so much, mom and dad, for writing the note for Andrea. And we are looking forward to see Andrea this afternoon. I also want to give a shout out to um, uh, Joshua, Joy, and Jael. They are in Northern California, but their parents sent us a, a, an, a picture, an image, a photo of them watching our program all the way in Sacramento. And here is a picture of Joshua, Joy, and Jael as they were watching our program, Kids Connection. Hello to the three of you. We miss you guys and we hope you're doing okay. We also have a picture that uh, Francisco and Frederico, mom sent it to us. They are in Mexico and here they are watching our program all the way in Mexico. We are so happy that we our program is reaching all the way to Mexico and kids all over the place are watching our program. If you want to send us your picture of you watching the program or participating on our program, 
send us an email with that picture and we'll be happy to share that with your friends in your note as well thank you so much i am sure that you guys are having um uh, some fun at home and having school at home and i hope that you guys are doing okay most of all we're all staying safe and i'm so happy that we keep coming back and watching this program every week now let's get our kids connection program started and what better than sing our song of the day so i invite you guys to stand up let's sing our song of the day that has to do with our program today welcome to kids connection Thank you for singing this song with us. Now let's bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for another Sabbath. Thank you for the opportunity that you give each one of us to worship together on our online program. We pray that your Holy Spirit be with us and may we listen and learn more about you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Now. Let me ask you something. Are you afraid of any animals? Are you afraid of any birds? What is the animal that you fear the most? Do you fear the lion? Do you fear the tiger? Do you fear a chicken? What? A chicken? Do you fear a rooster? What? I don't fear chickens or rooster. How about a turkey? Do you fear a turkey? Look, 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 look. Remember? You know what a turkey is, right? Well, on today's mission story, we're going to hear a story about this girl that she used to be so much afraid of turkeys. But there's a twist to the story. Let's watch a story of a girl who was afraid of turkeys and see what happened. Little Agnieszka grew up in beautiful countryside in southern Poland. A big green forest stood on one side of her house. A green meadow with pretty white daisies and pink and purple wildflowers stretched out on the other side of the house. Agnieszka loved nature, but she was easily frightened. She didn't like the dark. Strangers were scary. Her family had cats, dogs, and chickens, but she was scared of them. She was especially terrified of mooing cows and gobbly gobbling turkeys. Fortunately, no cows or turkeys lived at her house. 
but a flock of turkeys did live in the yard of a farmhouse that she passed on the way to school. Agnieszka loved school, and she loved walking to school. One morning, she skipped along the road to the village and turned the corner to school. A few steps later, she saw something that filled her with horror. She stopped in her tracks. Dozens of gobbly gobbling turkeys were wandering on the road. The birds were enormous, and they made a loud, scary racket. <laughs> Agnieszka looked to one side of the road, a rushing stream. She couldn't walk through it. She looked to the other side. More gobbly gobbling turkeys were walking in a ditch and strolling in the adjacent meadow. She couldn't walk there. She looked beyond the meadow. The gate to the farmhouse fence was open, and the yard was empty. The turkeys had escaped from there. Agnieszka was trapped. She couldn't go to school because of the gobbly gobbling turkeys. She couldn't go home because then she would be late for school. She sat down on the road to hide from the turkeys. God, help me, she prayed. Opening her eyes, she saw an elderly man riding a bicycle toward her. The man wore dark gray clothes and a dark gray cap. His bicycle was dark gray. He was coming from the direction of the school. Fearlessly entering the flock of gobbly gobbling turkeys, he energetically waved his arms and shouted, Shoo! Shoo! The turkeys gobbled even more and made a frantic dash toward their yard. Feathers flew and the screech of the gobbly gobbling turkeys was deafening. <laughs> Agnieszka was surprised that the stranger wasn't scared of the turkeys. She had never seen him before, but she wasn't afraid. He looked sort of familiar. As the old man rode past her, he said kindly, It's all right now. Agnieszka's mouth dropped open in amazement. She looked at the turkeys gobbly gobbling back in their yard. She looked back at the road to wave at the old man. He had disappeared. Agnieszka happily ran to school. She wasn't even late. The turkeys never invaded the road again. Agnieszka has always remembered God's answer to her frightened prayer. Now the mother of two children, she tells them how the stranger scared away the turkeys. I don't know whether he was an ordinary man or an angel, she says, but I know the victory came from God. I was able to survive the turkeys with God's help. Wasn't that incredible how that man was able to help her? Now, she doesn't know if he was just a man or an angel that came to help her. But I know one thing for sure. God sent that man to help her. The same way that man came to help her, other missionaries in other places of the world are helping people to get to know Jesus. And our offering is going to help them to continue to share that love of God to other people. Now, if you haven't done it yet, click on the link above here and ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries. Thank you so much for your offer. Now let me ask you something. What is your favorite thing in the world? What is it? Do you like <gasps> ice cream? Mm, how about Disneyland? Do you like grandparents? Do you like cotton candy, popcorn, swimming in the pool with friends, riding a bike, riding a scooter, jumping in the puddle, going to the beach, playing video games with your friends, playing board games with your friends? Do you like birthday parties? Do you like your friends? Do you like school? Do you like flying a kite? How about birds? Do you like going to the playground or climbing a tree? Do you like fruits or a road trip? How about camping? I bet you like presents. How about Christmas? Or maybe you like fire truck. Of all these things, which one is the one that you like the most? Or do you like something that I haven't listed? We all have our favorite things, right? And if you had one minute, one minute to do whatever you wanted to do right now, 
what would that one thing be? What would you choose? What would be your favorite thing to do for one minute if you only had one minute? Or if you could choose anything in the world to do for one minute? What would you choose? Ha! Would you choose to um, eat something really good? Or to do one of the things that I listed? Or something else that I have listed? Now, one minute seems very short, right? Well, let's think about it. Uh, let's see what a minute looks like. Here, well, a minute is 60 seconds. So, here's a minute. Here's 60 seconds, or not 60 seconds, but here is an example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was only 10 seconds. We still have to do this times six so we can get to a minute, which is 60 seconds. Now, 60 seconds could be a long time if you're racing a car. 60 seconds may not be a long time if you're going to school and you're getting to school. It's only a minute. But what would you choose to do? What is the your favorite thing to do for one minute? How long does it take you to brush your teeth in the morning? How long does it take you to get dressed in the morning? It takes a lot longer than 60 seconds, which is one minute. Well, let me ask you something. How about Jesus? Would you like to spend 60 seconds with Jesus? Was Jesus on your list? Did you think about Jesus when I asked you what was your favorite thing to do? On today's story in your classroom, we're going to learn of this man that could not just spend one minute with God. He had to spend more than a minute and not only once a day, several times a day. And I want you guys to pay attention to what is what was important to him. He didn't have ice cream back then or cotton candy. There was no fire trucks. But he, there were other things, but he chose to spend a lot of time with God. We're going to listen to the story after we sing our song of the day. And I hope that you guys remember of how he spent most of his time and why he did that. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and sing our song of the day again. And we are going to enjoy listening our story, singing together our song of the day. And then we're going to listen to our uh, teacher's classroom story right after this. Let's sing it together.
Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this program and thank you because you are our God. Thank you because you are keeping us safe and you are protecting us. We ask your blessings over all the boys and girls that are watching this program right now and the ones that are not watching. Be with them, protect them, keep them safe. Keep mom and dad safe, grandparents, and help us to get together again very soon to worship your name right here in Kids Connection. Help us to learn more about you now as we listen to the teacher with the Sabbath school lesson. And help us to learn how this man chose you as his number one, as his priority. Help us to choose God as our priority every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. It's always a pleasure, and I'm always happy that you guys join us every day. Don't forget, tomorrow we have Kid to Kid at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And parents, we don't have Parents Connection every Sabbath anymore. Parents Connection is going to happen on the second Sabbath of the month at 2.30 in, on the afternoon. So Parents Connection, 2.30 on the second Sabbath. Okay? And if you guys want Kid to come by and see you, send me an email, send me a text message, have mom or dad contact me, give me your name and your address, and we will send, I will drive kid to your house, and we will have kid say hello from a distance. We'll take a picture of kid, just like we did with the other kids last Sabbath, and just like we're going to do with Andrea this afternoon. And, uh, and I I'm so happy and I'm so excited that we got to see some of the kids from a distance last week. I can't wait to see you guys and to uh, spend some some time from a distance saying hello to mom and dad and, and you too. Thank you so much. We love you. We miss you. Stay tuned and listen to the story of your lesson today. Until next Sabbath, God bless you. Bye-bye. Good morning, boys and girls. I'd like to welcome you all today. I would like to welcome Sunny and Rio and Gia, Amy and Cameron, Aiden and Benjamin, Max and Vita, Carlina and Sammy, Janie, Jade and Jax, Caitlin, JR and Seth, Josiah, Vashti, Arian and Moses, Mia and Will, Nicholas, Luke and John, Andrew and Zori and that new baby, Joshua, Jael and Joy, Reese and Estella, Tyel and Federico and Francisco. I hope you all had a great week this week. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about how you get ready for your day. When you get up from your sleep, do you maybe brush your teeth? Or comb your hair? Those are all things that you should do. And maybe you have some breakfast? Mm. Well, there's something else very, very important that you should do, and that is pray. Now, we can wake up in the morning and we can pray before we even jump out of our beds. And also, we can read our Bible. And I brought a Bible with me. This is a small Bible that I have. You can read a Bible if you can read, and if not, Mommy and Daddy can read it to you. Now, today I want to talk to you about someone who put God first in everything that he did and his name was Daniel. You remember that we talked about how Daniel didn't want to eat the foods that God had commanded him not to eat. And you also remember we talked about how Daniel's three friends did not want to bow down to the golden image that the king had made. Well, that was King Nebuchadnezzar, and this is a new king. His name is King Darius, and he had taken over the kingdom from Nebuchadnezzar. Now, he decided that he liked Daniel a whole lot, and he trusted Daniel very, very much. 
So he made him the leader of all of his helpers. Now the leaders were not very happy about that. They were jealous of Daniel. Well, it had been almost 70 years since Daniel and his friends had been living in the kingdom of Babylon. And Daniel was a very important man in the kingdom. And some people were very, very jealous of him. So they went to the king and they said, O oh, king, live forever. You are so wonderful. Let's make a law that no one could pray to any god or person except for you. And if they do then pray to someone else, they will be punished. Well, the king was very proud. He was happy that his men thought so well of him. So he signed the law. He did not know that they were tricking him. The men were so happy that their plan to have a law passed had succeeded because they knew that Daniel would still continue to pray to his God. They rushed to where Daniel's house was and guess what they saw when they got there? They saw Daniel praying. He prayed three times a day in the morning, at lunchtime, and in the evening. And I'm pretty sure he prayed a lot during the day between those times too. And they knew he was not going to stop doing that. Well, the men saw that Daniel was still praying to his God, so they rushed back to the king. And they said, O oh, king, live forever. Your servant Daniel is not following your laws. He is still praying to his God. He still goes to his window three times a day and prays to his God. O oh, king, he's not following your law. He needs to be punished. Well, the punishment for not following the law was very scary. You had to be thrown in the lion's den. Wow, that was very scary, and they were hungry lions too. Well, King Darius was very sorry that he had signed the law, and he realized now that he had been tricked into signing this law. Why did he do that? But he had to make sure that all the laws were followed. He had to throw Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't have any choice. So he sent the soldiers to get Daniel. Well, as the king had the soldiers take Daniel to the lion's den, he said to him, Daniel, I hope that the God that you serve is able to save you from the lions. The king could not sleep all night long. He didn't want to eat anything. He didn't want to drink anything. He didn't want to lay on his bed. He was so worried about Daniel. Well, during the night, God sent an angel to protect Daniel from the hungry lions. Do you know that God made the lions so he can direct the lions also? And in the morning, the king rushed to the lion's den and he said, Daniel, was your God able to protect you from the lions? And Daniel said, O king, live forever. Your servant is safe. My God has shut the lion's mouths. Wasn't that awesome? God took care of Daniel and he will take care of us too. Well, Daniel has, had been tempted many times in the years that he had lived in Babylon, and he passed all of those tests because he always put God first in his life. And that helped everyone to know that he was trustworthy and honest. Now we're going to practice our memory verse, and let's see if we can say it. The thing you should want most is God's kingdom and doing what God wants then all these other things that you need will be given to you. And that be, comes from Matthew 6, verse 33. Let's try it again. The thing you should want most is God's kingdom and doing what God wants. Then all these other things will be given to you. Matthew 6, verse 33. Now let's try it one more time. 
The thing you should want most is God's kingdom and doing what God wants. Then all these other things that you need will be given to you. Matthew 6, verse 33. So God has promised that if we put him first in our lives, then he will give us everything that we need. Well, Daniel made a decision before he was tempted to stand up for what he thought was right. Now, I want to see if I can sing you this song. This is an old song that I sang when I was a little girl in Sabbath school. So let's see, maybe some of your parents know this song also. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose, firm dare to make it known. Wow, that says that Daniel stood up for what he believed in, even if he was the only one doing it. Let's try that again. still there with us. Amen. Well, I hope you had a good time today. I think my stuffed friends down here had a good time. They're all smiling at me. I'd like to show you the craft for today. And it is a little booklet. It says, God hears when I pray. And on the inside is a picture of a boy and girl. Now, over on this side and around here, you can write or draw the things that you would like to pray for this week. And try to think of something to pray for every day. Talk to Jesus every day. Look at your Bible every day. I hope you have a really wonderful week. Goodbye.